Hello everyone and welcome to our event this morning, Be Smart, Make Money, Food Costings for a Winning Menu and Healthy Profit Margins, sponsored by our partners Ballymaloo Foods, who you will hear from at the end of the session. Today's event will begin shortly. The session will last approximately one hour. All attendees will be automatically muted throughout the session and the recipes which will be discussed are available in the handout section in your toolbar. We'll have time for questions at the end, so if at any time you would like to submit a question, this can be done via the questions function in your toolbar. And these will be answered uh, during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. I'm now delighted to pass you over to Tracy Daly, development chef with Ballymaloo Foods and food business coach, and Judy Kinane, business owner at Espresso Bar in Kilkee to kick off our session today. Morning everyone and you're very welcome. I'm Tracy Daly and I'm here as development chef for Ballymoo Foods and I'm here with the fabulous Judy Canan of the Espresso Bar in Kilkee. So what is it that I do? So with Ballymoo Foods I get to uh, recipe test with their amazing products, create wonderful recipes um, and today the, the um, the focus is on those award-winning menus that make money, so costing is essential. So we're excited to bring you three dishes um, and show you exactly what it is we mean by that. So a full demonstration from start to finish. But I'm going to hand over to Judy and she's going to tell you a little bit about herself as well. Thanks, Tracy. So delighted to be here too. Thanks very much for having me. I am Judy and I own the Espresso Bar in Kiki. I had the lucky opportunity to take over the Espresso Bar uh, within the Kilkee Dye Centre. The guys in the Dye Centre were running it, running a small cafe within their business and they were looking for somebody to take it over so that they could concentrate within, on, on the dye business and the water sports centre here on the Wild Atlantic. And so I took over the cafe with the intention to look at how I'd make it sustainable right around here and obviously complement what the guys do on the, the dye side and provide yeah. make provision for, for their needs and also to extend the offering to the public and to open it up. Um, so I'm relatively new in the food business from that perspective and I don't have a food background specifically and I'm certainly learning all the time and I have the opportunity to learn loads from Tracy and, and others in the business too. Um, I did come from the business background and running the business, uh, running any business really, um, it, having that knowledge is vital and, and certainly took some transferable skills in from, from my previous life. Um, I think if we get this particular seminar really interested me and when Tracy reached out to, to support the process, it was right up my alley. Um, simply because my business is tiny, I um, have to make it profitable. Yeah. Um, it has to sustain itself. I can't afford for it not to make money. Um, and I work with you know lots of producers here in, in the area and suppliers in around the area. And there's some people dependent on that. Yeah. And we also have you know staff who um, we provide employment in the area. And so there's a sense of responsibility for me around that too, of course. So delighted to get involved in it and, and food costing. I, I actually not come from the food industry it was fantastic because I had to put sense on it. Yeah. I had to put processes in place and systems in place so that I could really manage it really tightly. Yeah. Um, so I could tell you what the dish cost was and what it was contributing to my business and whether it was worth having it on. And all the time reviewing it because clearly prices shift. Yeah, and, and all the time prices shift for different reasons and supply and demand obviously and um, getting access to product. Um, was vital. So I suppose in order to look at it being a sustainable business all year round, you know, that, that vitality of the business is so critical. It's so critical, and it's down to the nuts and bolts. Yeah, of each thing. The nitty gritty. Yeah, and it's something that we take for granted. You know, how to price a recipe. What's the point of pricing a recipe? Does it really matter? A lot of people are quite flippant about that approach, isn't it? So the dream of running a business, getting into a kitchen, and maybe not taking into account how every little pinch matters. And so you spoke about that, the health and vitality of your business. It rests on your menu costing. If you do not have your dishes costed appropriately, if you do not have your standardized recipes, your business is in trouble. Essentially, it's in trouble because you can cost yourself out of business. 
can't afford to have last features on your menu. Yeah. You know, some people would think in, oh, well, I'll make more in this dish than I do that, or it's compensate, but that just isn't like sustainable. Yeah, it's not viable. It's not viable, and certainly within our context, looking to run a, like my business is coastal. We're in a coastal yeah. town here, and it's fabulous, and it's a beautiful place to live. Um, and, and in the summer and in the, the peak season, it is really busy. So yeah. it's, it's, it's extreme. It's two extremes. And then it's looking at how we sustain the business throughout the year. Yeah. Um, and even yeah. in casual dining, looking at your menu. So for casual dining, to have certain dishes that are between 70, 80, and 90 percent finished. It's vital. So the final touches are at service. But even to get it to that stage, how to get it to that stage. So today we are looking at three simple recipes. Uh, we're putting a real emphasis on Irish ingredients because we want to think about that, the provenance of the ingredients, where they come from. And also, I think to uh, break down the barriers, a lot of people would assume that using Irish ingredients is not viable for their business. And so we're, this is all casual dining, isn't it? We're coming in at that casual dining stage within a business. Um, and so using Irish ingredients actually works brilliantly if and only if you, when well, you start to build up your relationship with your supplier, yeah. you get to know your people in your round, yeah. know your competence, where it's coming from, yeah. and be able to like, be creative. Yeah, like putting your menu together and, and pricing this quarter. It's, it's the cost, and always back to the cost. And the quantity yeah. that you're using, and I think looking at all of the product and what you would, you know, so that there's no waste because the yeah. waste is actually costing you money. Detrimental. It costs you money to yeah to put it in the bin. Yeah, it literally comes back to that. Yeah. So if we focus on, we're going to uh, create three recipes today. One is shashuka, very very popular dish. A lot of you will know about it. But the beauty of this dish is that the base can be made ahead, and this is kind of a cheese shashuka. So we're trying to reduce the the cost price of the dish as well by being a little bit cheeky. Uh, but we don't we never compromise on flavour. That's vital, really important. Uh, but also, we want that speed of service. How we can get it out quickly, um, uh, uh, standardize the recipe around it, um, and then costing it, and then looking at the margins around that. What must we do in order to achieve a healthy profit margin on every dish? What is the cash contribution from this dish to your business? So, if we start looking at the recipes, you guys have a handout. So, we're on Chachuca, which is your third handout there, and I have my base here. So, a beautiful tomato base. And I've been cheeky. I've just salt, pepper, sugar in there, balance those flavors. That pinch of sugar in tinned tomatoes is vital just for the acidity. Um, and in there, which one of my favorite ingredients, and obviously, you know, promoted by Byron Foods today, but also I'm their development chef. But I kind of am addicted to this wonderful fiery relish, and it just creates a hit. It's an immediate addition. Um, it brings a taste profile in there straight away. Simply done. No prep involved. And these are all food service products as well. So I have the lovely um, glass bottle, but they have also the beautiful containers for food service. So I'm going to pop in some there. But Judy, what Irish ingredients are we using in there today? Yeah. Our chef, well, well, we have seven ingredients on the menu and five of them are Irish first. Yeah, of course, incredible. Incredible. Level. So we have yeah. our relish, which we've just spoken about. Yeah. We have our lovely organic eggs. Yes. Yeah. From Tracy. Our garden garden. And we have a lovely feta cheese there. Yeah. And outside that feta. And we Beautiful. You know, we chopped crusty that came out of the garden this morning, which is lovely. And yeah. we have a lovely Irish sourdough bread as well. Yes, on our, our day bread in your mouth. Yeah. As far as that we're using here in Pekin's. And the beauty in this dish, Judy, the, the bread is actually left over yeah. bread. And for a lot of people, and I've seen it in bins because I get to go around the country and look at businesses from the inside out. And uh, the tail ends of the bread, some people get fed up that they don't know what to use with it. So this is kind of a dish that's on purpose. It's also popular to be around for a number of years um, and it's definitely a brilliant weekend brunch dish uh, but to use that leftover bread in a different way so I literally just cut it up pan fry it with a bit of olive oil a little bit of salt um, sea salt on top you can pop a little bit of garlic there for extra flavor as well uh, but it's a great use of leftovers it doesn't have to be fresh bread it's literally what's going into your food waste bin that bloody matters doesn't it so our base street for tea Lovely, simply done. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make a well just to pop in our eggs. So this is a dish for two people. So how much, this is for two people, I'm going to pop in my four eggs, really good quality, lovely base, nice, simple ingredients gone in there. I'm going to pan this over to Emma. Emma's fabulous. So this goes into the grill for four minutes, uh, 275 degrees. So I'll let you keep an eye on that. Thank you. Um, so the cost of this dish, yes. speed of chef you got, how much does it cost to produce two portions of this dish? Mm -hmm. And then what is it for one single portion? Mm -hmm. 
So the single portion is, the single portion of every single ingredient individually analyzed is two euros and four cents. Right? So the dish itself is 408, but for a single portion, it's two euros and four cents to produce. Yeah. And we're really finicky about this. So we've got a standardized recipe. The ingredients that go in must be weighed. Yeah. And something that you need to remember as well, when you're working with liquids, Weigh in grams. Write the standardized recipe in grams, including liquids. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, so our recipe costs 204. Judy, bring us through what it is we must do in order to get the price on the menu mm -hmm. and every aspect that we need to remember. So sure. starting at the time. So I mean, you do need to write in, in, individually and initially weighing out and yeah. to program what it really costs. Yeah, that's vital. Um, and to capture every single, every single thing that goes in, even to salt, pepper, and sugar. Yeah. Um, and so either you, you, know, you talked about leftover bread, but you've already paid the price. You were also pricing that just to be so specific about it, right? But once you add up all your accounts, you do have to go to product tax, as Tracy mentioned there, for, for, for the whole dish and for our item. But you also then need to think about how you're going to work out a price that translates into your menu. Yeah. And the types of things that you need to be thinking of in that is you know how much time it takes to produce it yeah. and how much the energy it goes in in terms of the you know whether it's gas or you're using yeah um over, yeah, your overhead of all descriptions and you know we all know what those are in terms yeah. of um, the industry but you, we do use a factor analysis in terms of yes. rating our, our price so we add we multiply our total price here in this instance by your four yes if you're so this is a sit down dining it is sit down dining it's here so it's a factor of four you are and yeah. you're looking remember you're also looking to make sure your gross margin your gross profit margin is set up correctly from the get go right yes. so you would want to be looking at somewhere around 75 percent of the gross margin so talk right about down I need to write that down just to remember that for later. A very yeah. specific figure. Very you also, specific. Yeah, you also need to be thinking about your batch. You are adding batch yeah. in this instance. And in most instances, um, you would be adding. Now, every item has a different battery. Yeah. Just to get into different categories, different battery codes. Very easy to find out on revenue.ie. Yeah. Brilliant platform. They've got all the information there. So it's really easy and accessible, isn't yeah. it? So for this dish in particular, the fat is the fat is at 13.5%, yes. and that equates to one euro ten onto the dish. And it, like last week, we're going to put the cash and the fat onto your price point, and it means then you have to take that out of your your gross margin, right? Which is a huge issue when you sit down to do your fat. Right. Where the hell is the money? Right. If you have not considered it or into the cost of your dish. There's added stress. So remember this: yeah. the batch of this dish is 13.5 percent, comes in at one euro ten. Correct. And you have a responsibility as a, a business yeah. owner or a business um, in this in this business to you know your custodian for the revenue. Yeah. You know, it's your responsibility to calculate it and to collect it. Yes. And they do obviously you do pay it on, on you know every month or every two months, depending on what you're what on. But your single portion also for this, including your, your product cost, mm -hmm. uh, including your margins, etc., you're up to nine euros twenty-six. Nine euro twenty-six for one portion, one portion of this dish. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. So let's take that even further. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the cash contribution to the business and why we need to remember that. Why is this also vital? Well, I think traditionally we would look at um, costs in the business in, in terms of food costs only. Yes. And yet you do have to take that into consideration. You need to make sure your food, you know, you need to be contributing a certain amount to your business through through your gross profit, right? And you have that that is an equation. Your prof, your your food costs can be more than twenty five percent. Yeah. So you have like all of the price that goes on it can be over 25%. So that's your key performance indicators for sure. Key performance indicators 25% of food costs. Yeah, yes. It can be over that. So you need to understand what your food cost is to calculate yes. your your food cost versus your retail price, right? Because that's how you work out your percentage. Yes. So you know you, you have to look at that, but it's not the only measure. You then need to look at well, what does this item on your menu contribute to my business? Yes. Because the cash. Cash contribution of a dish is yeah. vital, yeah. and also that cash contribution of a dish is also linked to where you might place that item on your menu. So menu engineering, in order to establish clever menu engineering for your food business operation, 
Right. You must do this. You must know this. You must understand it. You must yeah. because it's placement. It's placement, and from from a psychology perspective, where yeah. people are either drawn to, or where people, you know, how we purchase, how we purchase, try and test it. Yeah, we will go to certain areas of the menu, and that's where you need to have your key items. Yes, that have the most cash contribution to your menu. Yes. Um. So I think you know. We're going to talk that throughout the throughout this yeah offering really and, yeah but for me I would look at that by critically all the time yeah I would monitor my food press all of the time yeah. I'm in the back door what's happening what's coming in Correct. and then also and one thing that we'll get to uh, on the next dish is looking at that standardised recipe what that actually looks like what's entailed within it and why it's so important mm-hmm. yeah yeah. yeah. But if, like you know, there is kind of an equation we also work with. Like your, your labor is also a factor. Your overheads are also a factor. Those factors we talked about, and your food costs. So all of that, I would look at critically. Yeah. I would like even take it up yesterday. I looked at my takings versus my wages, and there was a little bit of a disconnect. Yes. You were constantly monitoring it to see you can't afford to be carrying, yeah. you know, higher wage costs versus your menu. Yes. Um, and so, so if your menu doesn't yeah, work for you. Yeah. Then you're in trouble. The yeah. business doesn't survive. Yeah. Yeah. And so in order to thrive, correct. we have to do this. I know we talked about you know in terms of this, this seminar being you know a healthy profit margin because you're mm-hmm. constantly actually you're working in your business of course, but yeah. you also have to work it on your business. And these are the types of things that fit into working on your business, looking yeah. critically and making decisions. And maybe you decide to take a menu item off because. The cost of tomatoes have gone through the roof for you can't see it. You know, tomatoes look or whatever your reason, but you're making decisions based on intel. Yeah. And relevant relevant yeah. data and you're you're making an informed decision. Yeah. Um customer choice. Yeah. Where are they going? What are they ordering? And what does that impact on your business? Their decisions. Correct. Yeah. 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 So you could be yeah. like, what get this? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Same um, decide to say the menu item ops and yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Just so yeah. That's it. So if we go back to tell me a single portion of this. Yeah, two euros and four. Yeah, I'm gonna get you to all next. I just want to finish garbage. Okay. Two euros and four for a single portion. And then for us to pop that on the menu, how much do we need to charge in order to get that on the menu? Yeah. So we had mentioned it was 926 per single portion. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and how do you guys feel about that? Yeah. Do you think that that's a lot of money? Do you think that that's okay? Are you comfortable charging that, knowing exactly what goes into this dish? Mm-hmm. How do you feel about it? So give us a happy emoji or give us a sad emoji. Like tell us through a little facial description of how this makes you feel. Are you comfortable with how this operates? Are you comfortable with what it is you need to do in order to achieve? A profitable menu item, um, are you comfortable with the pricing? Let us know what an emoji and Donica will tell us at the end how you guys feel. Yeah, so when you looked at the food cost here, Tria, yeah. we worked out just 22 percent. Yes, 22 percent. So at 926, that this is if cost you know 22, our food cost is 22 percent of the dish. Of the dish, yes. And then when we looked at the, the cash contribution or the margin into our business, this dish is contributing seven euros 22 into our. Into yes. our business yes yeah which is vital which is vital it? yeah and to be yeah. mindful of that understanding yeah. how that works mm-hmm. so it's the food cost versus the retail cost and uh what it is it brings into the business yeah. because your overheads are huge your overheads of running a business are absolutely huge in order for you to have new equipment in order for you to service your equipment if you do not have healthy profit you cannot maintain a proper business that is up to standard. It relieves a little bit of stress. Mm-hmm. Like there's other things, obviously selling a menu, getting people in. There's a whole marketing side of that business. Very aware of that as well. But for this, for the purpose of today, looking at those food costs, mm-hmm. it's integral. Isn't it? It is. Brilliant. Thanks so much. It's quite a job. Yeah. That's beautiful, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so give me a rundown again. The cost of the dish, the sale of the dish, mm-hmm. percent, and what it contributes. Mm-hmm. So if you have a pen or paper, write this down on your shakshuka recipe. Know what's involved. Mm-hmm. They were saying for one single portion is two euros and four cents. Yeah. And we're saying we're retaining it to my twenty-six. Yeah. And in that in that uh, equation, we're saying that food cost is twenty-two percent. Yeah. And our contribution margin. Yeah. So I mean, you have some options here. 
You yeah. could look at the 926 and you could say, hmm, mm -hmm. could I offer it? You know, could yeah. I offer it? So yeah. I looked down 926. We're, we're never going to put 926 on a menu. We should say that. We did right. speak about this. This is the equation. This is the multiplication. This is what it comes out as. Yeah. Uh, but we'll up it a little. So nine fives are always good, aren't they? Nine fives make you feel as if uh, a tenor is far too much. But nine, nine, five, okay, I can deal with that. That's acceptable. So that's another little trick of the trade, I suppose, to remember. We're not saying definitely good on that nine. Yeah, that price sounds a bit crazy. And if yeah. you were to change it, that would can, the food cost margin would drop to 21% if we put it in at 995. Yes. And it does which oh, is better, a little better. And then again, the margin contribution goes up to 7 euros ninety one. Yes. And I know it doesn't sound a lot, but actually it is. It, it makes a difference. It makes a dish. So if we were to sell 10 of those dishes, what does that look like? Yeah. It? It's understanding that this small little figure right now actually multiplies really well. And so if that's 10 dishes today, what's that throughout a week? What's that throughout a month? What's that annually? Um, and what it is to run a business, it's all of this money is vital in order to keep us healthy, to keep our staff employed. You know, to run a kitchen to a certain standard, the profit has to be there. To run a bunch of house, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. We have that team in place, we have to price our menu. And, and deciding how many of those you're putting on in your day. Yeah. And then deciding that these are going to sell. Yes. Because if they don't sell, yes. And if you decide to put on 10, I mean five, then your, your cash contribution is completely trashed. Yeah. Um, so it's then into what, what do we make, what do we do in the background yeah. to make this happen? How do we how do we make sure that this actually shifts? Yeah. How do we create a sensation yeah. to demand around yeah. that, you know, there's there's work for us. Yeah, because there's you know, there's obviously a bit of work that goes into it, there's labor, yeah. Um yeah. and if we as I say if we don't sell it is it is it is what are we doing with it? Yeah. So, so it's to be able to react, isn't yes. it? So uh, being proactive versus reactive, that's something that we talk about an awful lot, isn't yes. it? Yes. So to be proactive, it's it's looking at the reality uh, of the business, of the purchasing, what it looks like, what it entails, rather than reacting immediately, taking it off immediately. Look at the dish first, mm -hmm. take it apart, put it back together, see what it is you can do a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, so moving on, our next dish. So we've got the delicious ham potato cakes with halloumi and pea guacamole, mm -hmm. which is fabulous. So potatoes, ideally dry potatoes in here. Great use of leftover potatoes if you have such a thing. Yeah. Otherwise, I bake the potatoes. And the drier the potato, the better the potato cake. So steamed or boiled, it's, it, they're good. Baked, I definitely find better myself. And also, we love using leftovers, don't we? Which is another thing. So the potato costs me how much to get in? We have the, the fancy figures there. Um, and if it's a steamed potato um, or boiled potato, you're going to lose some of that potato in the making, aren't you? Um, so um, you want to take that into account. Isn't mm -hmm. that right? If I give that for a second. So our potato skins, what we did, we just tossed them with a bottle of oil, popped them back into the oven. I've got these beautiful crispy skins, which are going to be our garnish on the dish. So I love that use of leftovers. How do you make it work? for you because leftovers when your food waste goes around we pay for it to come into the business we then cost it to go into our dish but if it comes back on a plate or if it comes through waste and scraps we pay for it to leave the property again so there's three pricings on one ingredient it's amazing isn't it that circle of life for food prep is unbelievable so this is a great use of that um there's a chance they might be out of menu tomorrow um, but the potato cakes as i said the drier potato the better so in here judy tell us what we're talking about with our Irish ingredients again loving the fact that we can utilize Irish ingredients when we cost the dish, correct. And um, again, each ingredients that yeah. I could eat are fabulous. It's amazing, isn't it? We Wonderful. Lovely potatoes are yeah. Yeah. Or, or just eggs again. Yeah. Relish, yeah. Relish, we're going to say again. We have a new relish. The original relish we're using in this. We have our plain flour. Yeah. We have our lovely uh, red seed oil. Yeah. And we have salt and pepper, but we also then have our, our lovely cooked ham and bacon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fabulous. So, so simply done. Um, and then the accompaniments to go on this. So, we're popping this with a side of with the pea guacamole. Yeah, to be lovely. Yeah, and then actually, yes, gorgeous. So, the pea guacamole retains its green, doesn't it? It's vibrancy. Whereas avocado, there's 
there's a bit of upset around avocado because the production of avocado is quite detrimental to the producers. So we try not to use too many of them. I won't get into it today. Whereas peas, bird's eye peas, and I say bird's eye because I mean bird's eye, I don't mean any other brand. You want the best pea possible, you want the best flavor, the best vibrancy, have to be bloody bird's eye, uh, forgive me. But um, so literally the simplicity of this, mix it together, um, bring it out, pop it on a flour and surface, um, and then we're going to pan fry a few of those off which is lovely. But if you start to tell us, tell me how much it is to produce our potato cake. So the recipe box. Mm -hmm. So again, we literally take, take our ingredients down and we, just in terms of potatoes, we, uh, we cost potatoes at 700 grams, even though we're using 400 grams in the recipe. Yeah. So just a, Mindful. a little um, uh, nuance there that you need to equate that into your recipe. Yeah. So we, of course, the recipe has to pay for the food waste. It's, just, it's, it's totally, yeah. Yes, yeah. So those potatoes are coming in at 63, nearly 64 cents. Yeah. For 700 grams, our large egg is 32 cents. We've our plain flour in at like just 9.09 um, .09 cents. We've yeah. our value relish in at 52 cents. We've our oil. Yeah. And um, also the three food items of that cost it at the uh, zero, uh, zero 0.08 eight cent. Yeah. With our salt and pepper cost it at zero 0.03. 100 grams of lovely Irish bacon yeah. at 83 cents, the 37 grams of parsley, which is at 99 cents. And the total cost of the, the, the product here is 3 euros 50. When you put all of that together, yes. 3 euros 50. 3 euros 50. How many portions in this dish? And this is just the base, isn't it? This is the base of the product. This is the base yeah. product. With four portions. Four portions. Four portions. This so this per portion. portion. Yeah, so we have per portion. Um, is uh, 88 cents. 88 cents. 88 cents for per a potato cake. Exactly. Yes. And so the garnish then on top comes yes. in as wash. So we're going to put in the garnish here as I said, the piece of guacamole and we did the meat price. So we yeah. have the guacamole in as 77 cents yes. and the hilly meat at 159 cents. Yeah. And the full portion cards we have in here actually is we made a slight adjustment on this one. Um, so they get a pen yeah. and just make that wiggle as well. Yeah, so the the the, the total portion cost is now three euros and twenty four cent on this recipe. Yes. Yeah. So to produce this is yeah. three euro twenty four. All things considered, isn't it, Judy? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Everything is included in it. Yeah. So if we run through then how we're going to actually finish the pricing on this. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So, I mean, even based on our discussion last time, yeah, we're we're we're, we're building in our, our factor analysis again, yeah. just to work out. Our we're repeating that yeah. again, isn't it? The same process, repeating it. And I think this is, you know, it seems like a simple thing to say, but there's a formula. Yeah. It's consistent. Yeah. You apply it each time. Yeah. You work it out, and and that really is what informs you and keeps you, you know, stay consistent with your value price for many. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. You get into the habit of it. So yeah. to say, if you were starting this process now in your business as head chef, um, yeah. or whatever role you're in, and they've asked you to price the menu, yes, it's daunting. Yes, it's labor intensive. Um, yes, it's a little frustrating when you start. It's like anything, you, you try something for the first time. Generally, it's not that bloody much fun. But once you get into the habit of it and ensuring that you do that weekly and monthly reflection, this becomes second nature. This then changes the game for your business. Well, it does. And I think, you know, as a, a team member in any business, you're always looking to see where can I add value. Yes. And, and we all, yeah, we all have to stay relevant. Really work with everything. And so even understanding how the business operates. Yeah. And the learning. The learning opportunity you have in there by taking that chance to, yes. you know, work through pricing, work through costumes, to understand the impact of certain, you know, yeah. decisions around suppliers, use and suppliers, talking to suppliers, talking out suppliers, and being fearless about that. Yeah. Because having tough conversations is part and parcel, isn't it? Sometimes the producer will say, no, I won't go down to that price. Don't be afraid to look somewhere else. And I know it's lovely to stay with really great people, but if it's affecting your pricing, if it's affecting your bottom line, You've got to think about yourself, which is tough. It is, but then, it, like, it's not personal. I think it's important to, you know, you're running yeah. it as, business is money. Yeah, you're running it to make a profit and to, you know, provide a healthy, 
work environment yep. and, provide, and, and so when you have talks with business, you're able to, to invest in the business, be that in the equipment, be that in your people, be that in your yes. infrastructure, be that in the clothes that you wear or you present or how you build a brand yeah. and long term to think the business. So yeah. and I think, you know, just having this knowledge really gives you the ability to have those conversations with with your suppliers, yeah. Um, but as I say, regardless of your role in the business, you know, that opportunity to be, you know, a leader within your own field to be able to, to understand the workings and the implications of, of decisions. And I mean, very often, so yeah, I mean, this, you know, be in charge, being on top of your game, knowing exactly what's happening in your kitchen. Right. It's a lovely feeling, right? and it's a brilliant for training to understand as well. Essential, essential, really, because that's the difference when there's different team members in and the difference of the quality and consistency. Um, you know, we all probably have situations where we know when well, yeah. kind of duties on exists and then there's somebody else on exists, you know. So, which is perfect timing because yeah. if we look at your recipes and you'll see there's certain which one is here, um, even. Just the format, more so. So you'll see the different boxes on the way around. You'll see the different information in bold. You'll see the numbering, and you'll see the titles. The point of that. So the first thing is the title of the dish. Then to the left hand side, you have a picture. The picture is so important, isn't it? So the picture. My suggestion is to have a picture of a fully finished portion. The plate in which it goes on. The relevant garnishes and the exact quantity. Be quite specific about it, because when we're in a business, we're so busy. You know, we, we don't have time to stop. So for training in particular, if you take it a new member of staff, what do you do? Because it's a transient business. Right? You need to be able to train staff. So there's many things. Why is this so important? It's called a standardized recipe because it has a relevant picture. That's to the point. If the picture changes, you need to change it as well. And then to take away that recipe, pop in the new um, version. But underneath, we have ingredients. We have specific quantities that have to be followed through on. So it's ensuring you have the right weight scales there as well as this, because you want to the ground. Some weight scales don't go down to five grams. Right. So you need to make sure when you purchase a weight scale that it works with you, not against you. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But it actually makes a difference. Um, so we've got our ingredients. We've got them to serve with it. So what are the garnishes and the quantities within those garnishes that are being used? That then is what we use to price the dish. Right. So then we get our portion price after that. But underneath, another really important thing is about our equipment. To use the right equipment for each dish, that's huge, isn't it? You're giving them an extra chance. So when you walk into a new kitchen, new environment, if you can have all of the information they need to do their best job, that's a different game changer for a kitchen as well, isn't it? Yeah, and a different feel within the team that you have. It's literally two, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then we've got prep time, cook time, ready and duration serves. The point of that as well, for people coming into a kitchen, if it's your day off, someone else is coming in and they're only coming in casually, you can give them the tools, the information required to do their best job. It's phenomenal. So if the dish is in longer than 15, they can query it, they can question it, then they know that they need to take this up with somebody else. So it aids with the, the constructive questioning, doesn't it? Then we've got procedure. Procedure is step by step. Crucial because if a dish isn't how it's supposed to be, what do you do? You go backwards, you go back to this, you go back to your recipe, yeah. and you point stage number three to go this way. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit more about this? Yeah, so rather than me attacking you, mm -hmm. I don't want to attack you because our employees are everything to us. Yeah. That's family, you know, the team is your family, isn't it? So, in order not to attack, this yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. We can then query this point, mm -hmm. and maybe we need to amend it. Yeah. The staff isn't wrong. Yeah. The staff know what's happening. So recipes are there to be amended right. as it arises. Right. Yeah. So these are a working document, aren't they? Yeah. They're like They're never set in stone. And if yeah. you're not working, you change it. Yes, but please just say, oh, we just make, uh, <laughs> we just operate it in a different way. That's not what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to have the consistency and the verification, as you said, yeah, it's so important, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's critical, really. It is. So if we go through, if we have the, the cost, the menu cost, including the garnish yeah. per item, it's 324. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, we need a pen for this one. Yeah. Um, so if we go to the menu item costing, bring us through that process and write down these numbers, because mm -hmm. there definitely is a mistake. 
So at 3.24, tell me what I need to do next. Yeah, so we're going to allow for um, what we call the factor analysis uh, process here. And yeah. in this instance, we're multiplying this food product cost by four to create uh, the price of the city. Yeah. So at 3.24, that multiplied by four is now 12.96. Yeah. Um, and so that is your base base price for you for, for this serving. Yes. Um, and then when, remember we're going to add the VAT again in, in this instance it's been half food and so the 13.5% on top of your 12 by 6 is 1 euro 75. Mm. So that is going on top of your, your 12 by 6. Yeah. That brings you to the main price for the single portion as 14 euro 71 cent. Yeah. So who would eat pocket? Mm. Potato cake with pink guacamole mm -hmm. and delicious Irish halloumi um, for how much? 14 euro 71. 14 euro 71. Are we going to round up or are we going to round down? Yeah. So Tell us about that. So again, so in this instance, we've looked at the price, yeah. the retail price versus the total food cost. And yeah. that's going to give you your, your food cost percentage. And remember, we say that at a very base level, your food cost percentage has to be 25% or lower. Mm -hmm. So in our current format, yeah. the, the cost of this uh, food cost of this product is this food cost is 22%. 22%. And the contribution margin of this dish is yeah. 11 or 47 in its current format. Right? So it's so do I want to increase sales of this dish? Yeah. Is it worth my while pushing this dish on our menu? Because this cost you 324 yeah. produce. Yes. And your it would contribute 1147 to your business. And so what we're going to do with the three dishes, we're going to bring all of those prices together we're going to let you be fully aware of what it means on the menu. Where is it? Yeah, love it you. So again, you drink that necessarily for this on the menu for 1471. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, Crazy price. It would be that. And we could over it to 1495 or you could push it even higher than that. Yes. And I think something that is very interesting, you you will know your customers better yeah. and knowing what your demographic will pay as well. Yes. You know how much it costs you, so yeah. you have to at least charge that. Yeah. You may be in a position to change your cost in here yeah. based on your profile of customer yes. and what, what your customer is willing to pay. Yes. Um, because your customers are in charge a lot of the time. They are, and I suppose you you'll bring a menu to market, mm -hmm. but be aware that you need to change and adapt. Correct, yeah, 100%. Yeah, because as gorgeous as this looks, right? Yeah, and um, not this too. And you know, you're, okay. again, if you don't sell it, it's, it's um, yeah, it, 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 it comes to me if you don't sell it. Yeah. So it's just making that decision, and, and it, you know, the environment it's, it's delicious, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that, that's a discerning nice again, you know your business best. Yeah. You have intel, you've tried things before, you know what works, you know what doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and so it, don't be afraid to make decisions. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But make decisions based on information gathered. Right. Yeah. 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 Love it, you. That's fantastic. Yeah. So the whole potato uh, is going to work for us, isn't it? it, it, it potentially, it's we're not there yet. So moving quickly on, yeah. was um, time is flying. And yes. I know we're going at a speed <laughs> and at a rate. Yeah. So I just hope that uh, you're taking some of this in and that's of serious value uh, for you because that's why we're here today. Um, okay, so the next dish we have our um, mature cheddar, um, soda scones, so soda corals, and in here then we have our plain flour, our bread soda, our salt, our grated cheddar, and our balanu relish, just to give it even more flavour. And I know you all know this, and I'll say it again, but a cheddar and relish is outstanding, isn't it? Um, so in here everything's priced, measured, and um, so tell me, we need to pop in. Um, Buttermilk as well. Sure. Yeah. And again, we have seven ingredients on this. Yeah. And, you know, well, we have those seven ingredients are Irish. Yeah. I think it's a fabulous, a fabulous um, dish. And, then and to reiterate, yeah. don't be afraid to buy Irish. Don't be afraid to buy local. If you do the correct costings of your menu item and you do your multiplication and you look at the different factor analysis, yeah. you can make this work for you. Certainly, we found people yeah. looking for it and yes. looking for that. The want is there. The want is there. Yeah. And it's one of those things that is, you know, your positive kind of on from the last number of months. Yes. That we've been grappling with, and how there's such a big 
deal, yes. People are interested to know where the product is coming from. They're interested yeah. in supporting local. They're interested in you know keeping jobs local. Yeah. They, you know, we're becoming much more aware of the impact of, of moving goods around the country. Um, and our customers want that. We want it in yeah. our business. And how can we bring it into our business without getting absolutely terrified and overwhelmed? Right. Well, we now know how we can do that, but right. to give the customer what they want as well. And from a the story of you, there's yeah. loads of like more and more scientific research to come back just to say we should be teaching yeah. locally to see what our, our museum yeah. and to work with what you've got yeah. um, in your area, because the fields on your own. So, uh, so it's so lovely. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And the reality is, you can make it happen. Yeah. You, can. you can. You can make a difference on your menu and you can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So this dish then, so this is very simple, so the bread, very simple, it's the claw method, bring it together quickly, and the difference with, with this is that we cut it into six, so literally you're, you're nearly separating them on the tray. We have our baked um, one from earlier, thank you so much, um, I was in a thousand, <laughs> you are awful. Um, so we have one that we made earlier, and what we did on the edges, before it went into the oven, we piped in that extra bit of relish. And why can we do that? Because the crust on a bread, you know, when you get to that edge piece, where's the pleasure? <laughs> now there is, because we've got that big doubt of value relish to come in. So it's a single farrel, and it's quite generous in size, and I'll cut that now. Single farrel, cut in half, slathered in, um, we have St. Tola cream cheese, we have value relish, we've got um, streaky crispy bacon. Tell me how much it is to produce one of those. Mm -hmm. So the cost price of that to the business is what? Or when we think about one single scone, yes, it is two euros and seventy four cent. Okay. Yeah, with all of our garnish. Two euros seven support to produce that. It doesn't sound like much mm -hmm. when you start to work backwards and understand it. But for mm -hmm. us to put it on the menu and for it to contribute to our menu, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Can you yeah. bring us through? So we're gonna we're positioning this product as a takeaway menu. Yeah, let's take away our two on the new GSC. So we are working out our food costs, as we said, two seventy four, and then we're 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 building in here uh, for takeaway a factor analysis of three. Yes, um, so that brings us up to eight twenty two for this product. Eight twenty two, and a lot. And, and so we're, we need to put on our bat. We're yes. the, the custodian um, of that uh, gathering that uh, for the the revenue, and so the single portion. Once you've added in your vat, and remember this is a takeaway menu, and so there's some packaging involved here. Be considered, always remember your packaging. Yes. Too many people take it for granted and just go, ah, it's grand, it's grand. It's not grand. You no. Know, and there's a big challenge around packaging, you know, where lots of you will know that. Yeah. And there's a big demand of packaging across the country. The wait time, the wait time is quite significant, and the cost of packaging is significant as well. Yes. And I mean, there's a, a higher percentage of Compostable packaging now, which is fantastic, and again, there's a there's a certain cost associated with that. So, um, so yeah, so just to make sure you we sometimes forget, you know, yeah. how much a serviette costs, how much an item for costs. A business cannot carry that cost. No, 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 no. And I, and and to be portioned that out correctly as such, you know, um, is important. But in, yeah. in any case, we've added that in the packaging just to make note of it. Yeah. The menu price for this item now is ten euros and thirty cents. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is this is the, the, the overall cost to produce this is um twenty seven percent. Right. So this is an interesting situation. You've had yourself some gorgeous product, but straight away it's not. It's eating into our profitability. Yeah. Even before it's not giving us enough. It's not giving us enough. Yeah. Right. So it's 27 percent. Yeah. And at the maximum we are looking for twenty five percent at a maximum. Um. So what are you going to do? You need to look at it yeah. from, from your portion perspective. You need to look at it from your, is there anything you can do in terms of reducing some of your ingredients? Yeah. So from six portions of this tree, yeah. immediately, could we look at getting um, eight portions out of this? That could be reflecting on it, that doing the maths on it, understanding what that could mean. That could be enough. Yeah. You certainly have to consider it. You yeah. certainly have to consider it. And I think what would be very interesting here is to monitor this as it sells. Yeah, and if you have any waste coming back, um, and if you, if, if you know if you're finding that a portion of this is going in the bin, yeah. 
And if you were monitoring your bins and see if so you think she now flies a point. Um if yeah. they're fake way and they're they're torn, you know, portion doesn't spin. Yeah. It might be that there's too much in this. Yeah, it's too generous. It's too generous. So that really tells you when you make that decision. Yeah. Um, and that's okay too. Like it's okay. Mistakes are brilliant. Why are mistakes so beneficial? Because they allow you to make amends. They allow you to learn as you go. So you don't have to be perfect at this all the time. But it is. It's being proactive versus reactive. It's taking a step back and it's having a look. Correct. Because you waste management. What comes back on a plate? What comes back in a box? Yeah. You need to know what that looks like. And you need to ask yourself, why is that happening? Yeah. What have we done? And, you know, we found out many times that I don't want to ask customers. Yeah. You know, did you put on anymore? Tell me more. And I yeah. can't understand because I, I don't want to be dealing with the waste. I don't want to be paid for the waste. I don't want to be paid for the You know? Yeah. So, you know, and maybe this product isn't, you know, maybe the portion is perfect in this. Yeah. And maybe you're looking at your equation and saying, you know what? Maybe the price of 1471 could be off the price. Oh, sorry, maybe the price of 1013, sorry. Could be off the price. Yeah. Could this be 1095? Yes. And what would that do for our product? What difference does what it make? What difference does it make? And I'm just and how many can we sell? And how many can we sell? So yeah. And 1095, this brings you just to 25%. And you might go a little bit higher. Yeah. Right? You might do both. You might do portion change and this. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a few different things you, you, you know, you're playing with. Yeah. And you could be working with your suppliers to see if there's any margin you can get off. Yeah, particular and another thing, recipe testing. Recipe testing is everything, isn't it? Oh, it is to have the recipe test first, first the recipe standard. You have to. Yeah. You have to. And you're you're set your recipe standard to be standardized. Yeah. Vital right yeah. for your business. Is, is this vital for profitability? So yeah, quickly, because yeah. we love to make time for chefs and answers, of course. But if we look at the three yeah. dishes, so yeah. um, I might get I mean you to give me a hand as well. So we've got our soda bread. Yes. This one here, beautiful. Uh, slathered in um, um, St. Tola cream cheese, bacon, lots of relish, absolutely fabulous. And I'm going to grab that off you, Emma. Then we have our shakshuka, which has our leftover um, sourdough fruits, just for a little bit different to utilize those tail ends. Um, we have our shakshuka, then topped with our feta, a bit of parsley, delish. Brilliant, so much. And then we have our potato pancake uh, with our pea guacamole and our halloumi, and then using our leftover crisps, great hype on that plate, Great, isn't it? So, with all of that being said, there are three dishes from this morning. We've spoken about the actual food cost, we've spoken about the portion cost, we've then considered the analysis that needs to be attached in order to make it a viable item on our menu. Out of these three dishes, Judy, mm. what one are you pushing the most? Yeah, well, our, this particular portion here will contribute yeah. the most to our business. Yeah, it will contribute most to the business. So it's making, you know, making some decisions. So the placement of that will really be on your top for the visual. The visual. Yeah. So that top point or that bottom point in yes. menu, they're the two critical places. Yes, that you could put that. So if it's a, an A4 menu straight down, that's the approach you take. Correct. Yes. The placement. Yes. So that got the, the contribution to your business to America. Yeah, yeah. So we're making this look as glamorous as possible on Instagram to sell as many as we can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So it's brilliant. So uh, food costing, I hope you uh, fully appreciate that it's not easy, but it is essential. So it's not you could do this or you should do this. It's a uh, you must do this. If you want to operate the best kitchen that you're under, if you want to be the best chef yourself, to understand the business that goes behind menu engineering, recipe standardization, food costing, menu costing, these are the processes you need to get involved with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I, I think, you know, as a trade, this business is quite disciplined. Yeah. You know, in terms of how we follow the hospital, etc. right? Yes. So this is just another level of the discipline. And in addition to and that, yeah. it, and, yeah. you know, and it, and it, it, it kind of be, it's kind of fun as well when we get into it, you get into a bit of rhythm of it. And I suppose for me, it's so great to be able to send over your pricing because very often customers are telling you on it. Yeah. Happens to me all the time. And I actually have no problem 
problem justifying my work to myself, first of all, because I know exactly what went into it, and I know exactly who has contributed to it. Yes, I know exactly for you to open your door, for you to have a coffee machine, for you to have the shelving, for you to have a flooring, for you to have the heating, for you to have the ovens, for you to have the staff, the uniforms, uh, the suppliers being able to deliver the products, uh, the takeaway containers, the crockery, the cutlery, uh, the machinery, the equipment. You have to price your measure. And you know, people are like, I was a bit taken aback when people used to challenge me a bit about pricing or they would comment, you know. Yeah. But they do. Yeah. We do. And we're getting better at that. And yeah. it's, you know, and as a relationship with money and profit. Yeah. Yeah. Shift to business is money. That's the bottom It is. And on that note, we're finishing. Business is money. Um, and we also need to hand over to Donica. Hi, Donica. I hope we left you enough time. For questions and answers. Hi guys, yeah, plenty of time. My name is, is Donica uh, Ryan and I am Food Service Manager with Ballymaloo Foods. So firstly, just to say thanks a million to, to Tracy and Judy there, great enthusiasm in the kitchen, great energy. Um, obviously thanks to Chef Network for having us and um, yeah. thanks to everyone for joining in, great to see such numbers this morning. And Emma in the background, I forgot to mention there as well, doing Trojan work. <laughs> so I suppose, yeah, we have a few questions flying in, guys, so I'll, I'll get straight to them so we have time to get through them all. Um, so Noel has a question. Noel's actually uh, logging in from Spain, so we're all very jealous of it. <laughs> sunny, sunny weather there. So Noel is asking, can we explain in a bit more detail what is the cash contribution? And then is there a computer program that you guys have used or would recommend for kind of costing your and set your business and standardizing your menu, or is it more just getting an Excel spreadsheet and going at it? Oh, that's such a brilliant question. Yeah, nice. I actually myself have done a little bit of research on the packages, yeah. but what I started on, and, and so let me just say, I haven't computed on that research because there are so many packages out there, and some of them are quite complex yeah. because of scale and ability of businesses, right? And I'm a tiny <laughs> business, right? And so just Bring it back into basics. I literally sat down with an Excel spreadsheet, and I I have all my menu items, I've all my suppliers, and you know the prices on them. And I literally work out per gram what ingredients goes into which dish, and I do a formula. Yeah. Now, when I say it's automated, that's the extent to which it's automated. But actually, you know, once you get that nailed down, yeah. um, it's easy to populate it. So it actually just getting to that stage is the tricky bit, isn't it? So even I can hear him asking that question. Correct. And there's a brilliant app, and I want to just pop it out there. Um, I have it on my iPhone. It's called iChef, small I C H E F, all one word. It's a brilliant app as well, and that may help. Judy made the most valid point. It depends on the size of the business, yeah. doesn't it? So yeah, it's an investment. You know, technology is so critical. Yeah, and you know, it it, it, it serves you in so many ways in terms of time. Yeah. Um, labor. It does. It takes yeah. the labor cost out but so getting the right one for your business, I think, is critical. So yeah. It's difficult to answer specifically for no one what the right package is yeah. here. Yeah. But it depends on its business. Yeah. And so even just getting into discipline on a pen of paper, like with a very yeah. basic yeah. and that into maybe an Excel, that's how I started. Yeah. And it works fine for you long time, you know, in the in, yeah. in the greater scheme of things. Yeah. Um but as I say, we, we yeah, we, we use it daily. Yeah, and it depends on the scale of business. Yeah, hugely, absolutely. And then that may be a case of outsourcing it to an expert who's going to come in and help you on that as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah good points. No, I wish we had more time and we knew more about you. Mm -hmm. And we could bring you more time because I'm yeah. really Sorry, we have another question there then from Marie, and she, it's actually, it might be more for the tax man, but it's saying, is the VAT rate 9% currently that you add? I know you guys mentioned 13 and a half there, and there is a 9% currently tourism rate, so are you guys just putting in the 13 and a half because we think it will go back to that? Or? Well, there's, there's, there's lots of different rates still out there, right? So there's there's 23% on some of the products still yeah. because of the sugar contribution or the luxury product, be it chocolate or whatever, yeah. right? So actually, I know Tracy mentioned it earlier, like I would work closely with my own accountant to go through my menu in detail because even as we went through it, there were, there were some nuances, there were yeah. some discrepancies, yeah. and you do need to be careful right so we apply yeah. 13 and a half percent here into the half food category and hiring expertise so we have to pick up the phone uh, yeah. email or phone call to your uh, accountant is vital 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Deal with the it's, it's a great point, though, that that rate does change. It yeah. has changed quite a lot over the last number of 18 months. Yeah. Jones, 21, 23, back to 13, 9, you know. Um, and then, yeah. of course, it, it changes then whether, you know, if it's hot food, cold food, that kind of thing. So definitely best to ask an expert or refer to revenues for. And oh, sit in, sit in or take out, yeah. or again, sit in, take yeah. out, cook, sit in, take out, lunch. You know, the yeah. different nuances within it. So, yeah. And sure, okay. the factor as well. Marie, it's not a straight answer, but definitely link in with your accountant. Um, and for certain, yeah, great, great question again. Yeah, thanks, work. And we have one more question just flying in there. So someone asking, can you explain again why you multiply by four for sitting and three for takeaway? Is that your own? calculation or is that how would you arrive at that number yeah so there's kind of uh, just guidance out there in this business the factor so to to evaluate your cost it's somewhere between 3.3 percent actually and four and it's just a formula that's used within the industry and so it's to equate for everything from your labor yes. to your overheads to your profit margins yes. etc so it's it's an tables chairs staff to service sit down versus take away possibly through a window yeah. and so there's so yeah. many other things that come into play and that's the point of it is to know that it's a different beast which way you look at it yeah. and so the, you know different businesses use different analysis to work out their costs yes yeah. so this simple formula to get to your to to your numbers really um to ensure you achieve it quickly yeah yeah but lots of your your overheads are still the same you know whether you have pest control whether you're sitting yeah. or take out which you have waste management you know what i mean so there's lots of costs that remain the same stable stable yeah. and guaranteed yeah. yeah and so and, and labor costs obviously vary between you know experience levels with kpis which we didn't say don't i will hand over to you because i know you want to uh, close as well I'm conscious of that but kpis do cost 25 percent labor 32 percent overheads 24% net profit 18 the point of these on a weekly basis is that you are ensuring that you're coming in on those percent correct yeah yeah if your labor is over 32% you have a problem yeah it's a problem straight away your business you know we talk can't sustain it can't sustain it in this seminar is about healthy yeah. profits for a business yeah um, and the profit are to go back into the business or to do what you want with but the profits are there to sustain a business, to give business vitality, to allow it to employ the staff um, and to work with amazing producers and suppliers. Anyway, over to you, Donna. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks a million, guys. That's the last of the questions, anyway. And um, look, as I said, if anyone has any questions, the handouts are there and they'll be shared afterwards. So hopefully, they're a good resource. But no, just to say thanks a million again to everyone. And um, I suppose, as Valley Blue Foods, we're delighted to be a partner with Chef Network this year. We're going to look forward to partnering with them for, for many more years to come. So um, they're obviously a great community, great resource for chefs. And just to, yeah, everyone, we're looking forward to getting back to normal and getting the industry up and running. And, and best of luck to everyone for the, the busy Christmas season that's not out coming out that's track. It. So lovely. Right. That's it. Continues with lots of profit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so okay, much. Thanks, everyone. Bye.